Kowalski. I'm the superintendent of the water restoration plant for the city of Grants Pass. Uh, what we're going to do today is give you a tour, uh, show you some in-depth uh, workings of the plant so that you know when you send water down the drain or the toilet, you know where it goes, what we do to clean it before we send it to the river. So we're going to start our tour today in the lobby. What we're highlighting here is the SCADA system. The SCADA is the brain of the plant. What this allows us to do is see what equipment's running. It allows us to turn equipment on and turn equipment off. It also has alarming capabilities. We staff the plant just during the day, usually from 6 to 4.30, but the plant is placed in automatic overnight. The SCADA system, it monitors it, and if it sees something that's not normal, it sends out a text, and we will answer the text and come in and find out what's wrong. SCADA is an acronym for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. So we're in the inflow pump room now. We're actually three stories down from ground level. We've got a huge tank on the other side of this wall where all the sewage from the entire city collects behind that. These three pumps pull that sewage through, pump it around the volute, and then they go up all the way to the very top of the plant. These are the only pumps that we use for the flow in the plant. From the topmost part on, it's all gravity flow. Now these three pumps were able to throttle, just like you can throttle your car. We can speed them up or slow them down to maintain a certain level inside that tank. These are modern technology. We've had these about 20 years. They pump about 18 million gallons a day per pump. We also maintain one of our older pumps, which pumps about 10 million gallons a day. We cannot throttle that pump. Once we turn it on, it's pumping 10 million gallons. We turn it off, it's off. So we can only use that pump when we have high flows. We'll turn it on, it'll pump 10, and then we'll use one of these newer pumps to throttle the difference between 10 and whatever we're flowing, 15, 20, 25 MPD. Okay, follow me upstairs now, and we'll look at the controls for these pumps. Okay, so now we're going to go into the room that controls the pumps we just looked at downstairs. Follow me. So we have three VFDs. VFD is an acronym for Variable Frequency Drive. These allow us to control those pumps we just looked at downstairs from no flow to max flow. On the other side here, we have our check valves. So as I stated before, we pump the, the sewage from the lowest part of the plant to the highest part of the plant. We have four pumps. We have four pipes with check valves that are sending it to that highest part of the plant. So this is our boiler. We fire it with natural gas. Um, this boiler has been here since the early 70s. We maintain it every year. It's inspected every year and it's licensed by the state every year. This boiler does all of our heating in this entire building. In addition, its primary purpose is to keep our digester warm. The digester is a process that's just like your human stomach. You have to maintain a certain temperature for the organisms to do what they need to do. We use this boiler to do that. So here we're at the partial flume. This is the highest part of the plant that those pumps we just looked at are pumping to. What we do with the partial flume is we measure the flow. We have to know how much is coming into the plant so that we can treat it. It helps us with our calculations. In addition, we have a sampler. We pull samples through the day so that we can perform our tests to verify that we're cleaning the water as we should be. 
now we're up on the headworks. The headworks is comprised of four different processes. We have a filter screen and we have a bar screen. Now what these screens do is they take out the inorganics in the flow. We have to get those inorganics out because we can't treat them otherwise. Uh, these inorganics are uh, flushable wipes, boards, pants, diapers, anything that somebody thinks they could flush down that shouldn't be flushed down, we have to get it out of the flow. That's what these two screens do. Once they get that out of the flow, they put it in the trough and it goes to the compactor. It then squeezes it, compacts that all down, gets the water out, and goes into a bin which we take to an approved landfill. In addition, we also have grit cyclones. Now grit, rocks, and gravel are terribly hard on our pumps, so we have to get that out. What those cyclones do is it spins the flow and the heavier inorganics, rocks, grit, gravel, will flow to the outside and then come out of the flow. Now we're on our primary sedimentation tanks. So what we're doing here is we're bringing all the flow into these tanks and we need to slow it down. We slow it way down. And then what happens at that point is whatever will float, floats to the top. Whatever's heavy will fall to the bottom. We have sprayers that are spraying what floats, we call that scum, and it's pushing it to one end of the tank. We have sludge, which is at the bottom, which is pulled to another end of the tank. Come with me and I'll show you what the tank looks like without water in it. So if you look down here, you'll see we have a series of flights that are on chains. What these flights do is they go all the way to the end of the tank, they hit the bottom of the tank, and then they're like a big plow. They pull that sludge from one end of the tank all the way to the other, and from that point we pump it off. So here we are at the end of the primary sedimentation tanks. What we need to do is pull our clean water off of the top of the tank. At this point, we've done about 50 to 60% of our treatment. So these effluent weirs are pulling just that top water off of the tank, flows out these troughs, it comes across, and then it flows back under our feet to the next process. That's the aeration basis. Now we're at the aeration basin. The aeration basin is also known as a selector. What we're doing here is we're selecting what type of microorganism we want to do our work. Basically, we're glorified ranchers. We are giving the organisms the perfect environment for them to thrive so they can eat the food and then they reproduce and we bring them back to do the job all over again. As you can see down here, this is where the flow comes in from the primary bases we were just at. It comes in, it mixes with the organisms, and then they start to do their job. The first cell here, we give them no oxygen. This makes them real hungry for oxygen before the next cell where they'll uptake a lot more. So come with me and we'll walk down. So you'll notice a lot of equipment here. We have to maintain a certain level of oxygen in these tanks. So we have dissolved oxygen sensors. What they do is they tell the computer, hey, there's not enough oxygen. The computer will then open up valves and allow more air to flow so that the organisms can breathe. We also have gates. We have the ability to change the flow of the way that comes into the basin for different times of the year. Different times of the year, we have requirements to make us remove other constituents. Primarily summertime, we have a tight limit on ammonia, and we have to really use every bit we can to try to get that ammonia out. So the second cell, you can see we're hitting it pretty hard with oxygen. The third cell, the fourth cell, we then take the oxygen away again comes to the fifth cell, we give them oxygen again, sixth, seventh, and eighth. This whole process helps us to remove the nutrients from the water. We cannot do this without the organism's help. We have to have them, and so we provide the perfect environment for them to thrive. So now we're in the blower room. We have four blowers that compress the air that they take in, they send it through the pipes, to the aeration basin where we were just at. These are supplying air so that the organisms can breathe and perform their work. These are 200 horsepower motors that are driving these compressors. They put off a lot of noise and a lot of heat and they use a lot of electricity. This is probably our second highest energy consumption area, but we have to keep the organisms happy and doing the work for us.
now we're at the splitter box. What the splitter box does is it takes the flow from the aeration basins and it divides that flow up to the secondary clarifiers. We have three secondary clarifiers, so we need to split it up evenly. At this point, the flow is called mixed liquor. People get a kick out of that, but that's what we call it. clarifier. What the secondary clarifiers do is they take the flow from the aeration basins, you bring them into this tank, you can see where the mixed liquor is flowing in, and then it flows out of that ring into the outer ring. What we're trying to do is slow that flow down as much as possible. So we had organisms over there creating colonies, reproducing, getting more and more and more. Well then those colonies get heavy. We want to slow it down in this tank so that they can fall to the bottom. We then collect those colonies and we send them right back to work over in the aeration basin. Kind of a, a circle of life for microorganisms. So now we're at the digester. The digester processes a lot of our solids from some of the areas that we've been. We're gonna go take a look at the inner workings of the digester now, so follow me. So this is our digester control room. The main purpose here is we're keeping the sludge that's inside the digester flowing. You don't wanna let that stuff settle out, so you gotta keep it moving. So we're pulling the liquid sludge out of the digester, pumping it back into the top, so it creates a full circulation. We also have a gas compressor. We're pulling, we're pulling gas off of the top of the, of the digester. We then pump that gas down to the very bottom of it, and then we use those bubbles to also help mixing. In addition, we have to keep this digester warm. So as you know, saw previously, we had the boiler. We have a heat exchanger that's pumping boiler water through this pipe. We have a smaller pipe that's sludge that is pumped through the middle, so there's a heat transfer there. So we keep this digester anywhere from 95 to 102 degrees. It's almost very similar to a human stomach. We have to keep those organisms warm so they do our job. Once again, this is just like the aeration basins. We have another set of organisms that are breaking down those solids, oxidizing them, consuming them, and they're doing the work for us, so we have to keep them happy. before we have a digester that does work for us. We send a lot of our solids to the digester so those organisms can break them down. Once they've done their job we've got to get that that sludge, that digested sludge, out of the digester. This is the digested sludge holding tank. This is where we send that sludge. Um, it, it's kind of amazing we have this much sludge in this tank open air and there's very little odor. The digester is doing its work. From this point we'll pump this sludge up into a belt room in the main building and then we'll dewater that sludge. We then take that dewatered sludge to a, an approved landfill over in White City. So this is what we do with the digested sludge. We pump that sludge up over this belt. This is called the belt filter press. It's a perforated belt that allows liquid to flow through it. What we want to do is we want to get all the water we can out of this sludge. So we dewater it. What this belt does is there's two belts. The sludge flows across the top, gets quite a bit of water out through the first pass. Then the two belts will come together. 
and then as they come together the sludge gets squeezed and then it's worked over a series of rollers back and forth back and forth and it just squeezes and squeezes that sludge more and more which pushes the water out of it we then collect that water send it right back through the process of the plant but the sludge the dewatered sludge comes off of the end of the belt drops into a hopper and then there's a spiral that runs it out the side of the building into a bin and then we pay a contractor to come and collect those bins three or four times a day they haul that to an approved landfill talked about we finally have to disinfect the water before we send it to the river so what we use is, is ultraviolet lamps this is what the lamps look like this is one rack that goes down in the water what this ultraviolet light does is it, it breaks down the DNA of the organisms it's a specific wavelength 254 nanometers that will penetrate the cell wall it knocks off one of the chemicals one of the molecules off of the DNA so which causes the two molecules that are close to dimerize or they'll come together. What that does is it, it sterilizes the organism because then the RNA which replicates the DNA is running down that chain and it's almost like a broken zipper. It, it can't move any farther once those two molecules are dimerized and in effect it stops the, the whole life cycle of the harmful organisms. That's what we're doing at this point. where the water is measured before it flows to the river we also need to sample it once again part of our our lab process to make sure we're doing what we need to do so this is a, an automatic sampler it's taking a composite sample so 24 hours a day this is pulling samples every few minutes so it gets a representative sample of what's going to the river rather than taking a snapshot at one or two times of the day it's taking a, a tiny sample all through the 24-hour cycle and this is what we pull out to take to the lab to do our tests. So here we have samples of the wastewater as it comes in the plant, which is in this beaker, halfway through the treatment process, which is our primary, which is in this beaker, and then the final before it uh, is goes through disinfection and goes to the river. It's a great visual representation of how clean the water is uh, going out of the plant. Thank you so much for joining me on the tour of the water restoration plant. I hope it was informative, uh, educational, and entertaining. Uh, we're very passionate about what we do here and we love to share. So thank you for spending this time and uh, watching. Have a great day.